welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're visiting the Future Tech Now trade show, which is being held here at the Business Design Centre in London in April 2018. This massive hall is exhibiting all kinds of computing and computing related technologies, so let's go and take a closer look. Two of the stars of Future Tech Now are these robots on the DV signage stand. The first of these is the Sandbot Elf, a commercial service robot designed for use in hospitality and in retail. As you can see, the Sandbot has illuminating paddles rather than arms and hands, and here at the show is being set up to answer visitors' questions. So, let's try a conversation. Where is the main stage? The conference stage is at the rear of the main show floor. Sunbot's equally friendly comrade is Pepper. This was developed by French pioneer Aldebaran, which is now part of SoftBank Robotics in Japan. Pepper is four feet tall, and as you can see, glides around on a skirt-like pedestal, above which it has a humanoid torso, head, arms and articulated hands. SoftBank described Pepper as a genuine day-to-day -day companion and the first humanoid robot capable of recognising human emotions. In practice, this means that Pepper is able to analyse a person's voice, facial expression, body movement and language in order to identify joy, sadness, anger or surprise. Here at Future Tech Now, Pepper is helping to introduce speakers on the main stage which is why it's been fitted with a microphone to pick up the sound that comes out of its ears. Just before the show, I also introduced Pepper to my own microphone to record one of its rehearsals. Welcome to Future Tech Now. I hope that you've been enjoying the show and that you've had a chance to interact with some of the incredible future tech that is here. The next conference session is all about me. Well, not me personally, but it deals with robotics and artificial intelligence. A big focus at Future Tech now is virtual reality, with many exhibitors demonstrating some amazing VR systems, including this training setup from Immerse. Such applications require a high level of computing power, and hence several manufacturers are showcasing appropriate hardware. These include PCs on the Cooler Master stand with their really cool internal LED lighting. Also demonstrating VR in action are custom gaming PC manufacturer CyberPower. Here on their stand, visitors are trying out a free VR game using an HTC Vive headset and controllers connected to a CyberPower system. Also on the CyberPower stand, we can see some really nice custom gaming rigs, such as this Infinity Extreme Pro gaming PC. Personally, I've never purchased a pre-built PC, but if I ever do, I may well turn to CyberPower for something that looks this cool. The company also make customizable gaming laptops, which even include individual multicolor LED lighting under each keytop, so even the keyboard can keep you entertained. Returning to the VR fold, on the HP stand we find the HP Windows Mixed Reality headset and controllers. Quite why the headset is termed Mixed Reality I'm unsure, as it's for immersive VR, not augmented reality. This said, it seems a very nice peripheral, has a resolution of 1440 by 1440 for each eye, and can be used on any powerful PC. However, for a fully mobile VR experience, it can be connected to the HP Z VR Backpack PC. Principally intended for industrial use, this i7 PC with 16GB of RAM and a Quadro P5200 GPU can be used as a standard desktop when plugged into the HP Z VR dock. But then, for mobile use, it attaches to a backpack and two belt worn batteries in order to allow its user total freedom of movement when experiencing virtual reality. Gathering a lot of interest at Future Tech Now is the Tesla suit, which its manufacturer describes as the world's first smart clothing with haptic feedback, motion capture, climate control and biometric feedback systems. 
In practice, what this means is that the Tesla suit allows its wearer to feel as well as see virtual environments, in addition to having the motion of their body mapped back into virtual reality and their vital signs monitored. At the show, visitors are trying out the top half of the Tesla suit, although, as we can see on the product's website, a full body suit is available which contains both a jacket and trousers and provides the ultimate VR experience. The Tesla suit will be available in a variety of colours and obviously has the potential to transform certain types of gaming and other VR applications. I spoke to several visitors who had tried it out and all were very impressed with the force of its haptic feedback. Innovating a quite different type of VR peripheral, Arcodharma, who have developed this new control hardware for interacting with a tablet, PC or TV. The user takes its tracker or spark device and moves it around both on and above the Kadama mat or dock, so allowing them to control a cursor, character or other entity in 3D space. The resultant interface is very intuitive and offers many new opportunities for 3D game control. In April 2018, Kadama is taking pre-orders and the company will soon also be launching a Kickstarter campaign. And, as you can see, the system also happens to be really great for Minecraft-style building in 3D space. Virtual reality offers many opportunities to create fitness applications, and here at the show, some of these are on display. For example, here is the Icarus device, which is used in combination with a controller that mounts on its handlebar, and a VR headset into which a smartphone is attached. This setup then allows participants to enjoy VR experiences that include flying, diving or free falling. The Icarus device places the user's centre of gravity over a neutral point and by shifting their weight the user moves it around so giving themselves a good workout in virtual reality. Also in the VR fitness marketplace are FixXR with their Box VR game. This provides its users with a boxing VR workout that many people have reported to be very strenuous exercise indeed. Also capturing my interest at the show are Extreme Flyers with their Microdrone 3.0 Plus. This is advertised as the world's smallest drone with an integrated gimbal and I love how its controller offers speeds of slow, fast or insane. The Microdrone 3.0 Plus can be fitted with a Wi-Fi camera module but also records to an SD card and which attaches magnetically to the base of the drone. This allows for FPV or first person view flying as video streamed wirelessly from the camera can be viewed on a head mounted display. Alternatively, output from the camera can be viewed on a smartphone attached to the controller or using a cardboard mount that turns the smartphone into a headset. To help new users to learn to fly, Extreme Flyers are even developing their own VR drone simulator. To date, I've yet to personally really investigate drone technology. However, seeing the Extreme Flyers hardware in action has seriously caught my attention and so this is a facet of computing technology I may return to in the future. The exhibits at this show very much demonstrate how the digital and physical worlds are continuing to blur. From robots to custom PCs, drones to all kinds of virtual reality, we've seen some fascinating technology and I hope you've enjoyed having a look around. If so, please press that like button, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. But now, rather than signing off myself, I think I'll hand over to Pepper the Robot. But now that is it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.